Alright, so <clears throat> welcome again. We're going to talk about file carving today. This is the first video about digital forensics where I'm going to show you that let's assume that you found some chunk of data and all your trusty tool fails. So you can, of course, feed some tool with some chunk of binary data and then that tool is going to try and extract data from it. Let's assume you're trying to find some images. And let's also assume this, that the situation is now as the following. So you have, let me, let me paint for you guys so you can see it. Let's assume this is the, the hard drive that you found on the crime scene. And most of it is damaged or wiped. Anyways, it doesn't really matter. But there is some part of it that is, that is not. And that is this part here that I'm drawing a circle to, which is blue. All right, so that chunk of data here is now something that you're gonna try and do some forensics analysis on. And whatever is inside of this, we do not know. We have a slight uh, idea about that there are some images of you know unknown origin, and those images would probably contain illegal um, stuff. So, something that should not be on images. So, let's assume that this is our case, and we extracted a, a chunk of data. Now, I made this extremely easy, so I, I already created this chunk of data. It is basically just one file, a spy alert, but it is. And, but there are some, some waste data with, uh, that I'm gonna show you, and I'm gonna show you a way on how we can use Python to extract this file which is inside this chunk of data that we just got from the you know extraction of the of the of the hard drive so the whole idea is that you can of course uh, download some tool here i guess the version is outdated the ftk imager is a tool that can you know access data i'm fairly certain that it can also do volatile extraction so from ram so basically if we do have an image or something or some data we could in theory theory use this it could also come from a usb key it could come from many uh, many places so um so imagine that you're looking at this kind of file it's just a haystack right you just see a lot of hexadecimal stuff and you see the common try to translate the hexadecimal data to something human friendly readable uh, human readable friendly whatever so this is our uh, life today we're looking at hexadecimal numbers which is representing numbers uh, sorry data it could be anything basically this file here it could be a small image you know just containing these amount of 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 of, um, of bytes here is not enough to be something big but it could be a thumbnail or something or some fav icon for a browser so in uh, digital forensics uh, carving means that it, it's looking for files in raw data or memory dumps you know sometimes you <clears throat> sometimes you 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 basically cannot find anything with an automatic tool or an automatic scan now i'm fairly certain that if you feed the file you can download in the description below i'm gonna put it there so you can download of course um i'm fairly certain that if you do that it's probably gonna find it but sometimes there are new file formats and your trusty tool doesn't work so what can you revert to that is something easy with python which is why i'm doing it just opening a program and clicking see look uh, click click open file extract yay you know it's it's not even worth to do that in the video. I, I, I think that's a waste of time. So um, if you just want to click go heavy lucky, um, then there are programs for it, which is also something I'm going to mention along the way. This is just the first video about file carving. There's going to be a lot more videos about carving in data, uh, raw data. This is the first one. And of course, you should be aware of the header and the footer as we discussed the last time 
that a header is something also referred to as the magic bytes in a file or that describe you know what kind of file is it that you are trying to do for you can also get false positives because sometimes there are random chunks of data that's gonna look like a header it's gonna look like a footer of course it is not on it's not it's very limited to the numbers we have in hexadecimal and we've got 16 different notations so sometimes we do get false positives and yeah it's the way it is as we talked about all files have some sort of starting header it could be something like that this case is just a, uh, a random number but just wanted to demonstrate the actual idea then you have this kind of here this is um if i don't rem if I remember this correct this is the header for zip files we can basically check that so if we go you know and access this web page here and we write zip and i'm gonna find the real zip so it says 54b34 and what we saw here is 54b4556 okay so let's see 54b34 54b so maybe we're going to try and just look for 54 sorry 4b and was it five six so we can say five six and yes that is also a a zip file you know there's so many different kind of zip compression algorithms versions and other types and it's a jungle and i'm it is just the way it is but we can find it pretty easy that this is actually the header of some sort of file all right so We have some links here. I'm going to post them in the description below. And we also have the hex edit so that we can download and look at the actual, you know, um, hexadecimal code or just the hexadecimal, not code, but data. Sometimes it's easier to look at it because if you can code a lot and you can, you know, get really confused and it's just coding and looking for stuff in raw data is basically, you know, searching in blind. But, um, if you can also open it and see is there actually something here or is it just all zeros For, because if all the data is just zeros it's just like yeah it's nothing so all right so this is the first exercise we're going to do this is estimated to take around 15 minutes but that's a classroom exercise we're going to use python 3 to open a file and read binary mode which is very important and we're going to use different functionalities I suggest using read and seek, but um, the version I have here and I'm gonna pull it in is a tad different. All right, so what we have here is an actual script. When you run this, it will save a file. You can see it highlighted here and I can zoom this text here. It says test.jpg, and this is the file. I can call it basically anything. And you see it represents some sort of ninja at a you know small computer. The size is 12.6 kilobyte, which is 12,600 bytes, which is quite a lot if you're gonna just look at it in a hexadecimal editor. In programming, it is quite easy. So what we basically do here is, and if you cannot code, I, I then it doesn't really matter because forensics can also be done using some tools and, and basically if, if that is what you want to do, um, you can do that. But in the end, it's never a bad idea to, to be able to code in you know, Python, which is a really easy language to learn. So I hope you can understand there's nothing more here it's only these 26 lines you know so let me just explain i have a variable here called byte to save i'm gonna initialize it as a byte uh, variable so that is why i'm setting it equal to some empty bytes then i have a variable here called file found which is a state variable indicating whether it's a found a file or not 
then I with open basically means that I open the file and when the file is you know when the file descriptor is in the end well basically it's gonna close the file and and Python gonna handle all the file closing for me so I don't have to do the file that close like I'm doing just doing here below which is a totally isolated new file that I open and write some bytes and close it but that is a different thing what I do is basically opening this file called calf1.bin which is the file we're going to download from the description below and this is just a raw you know piece of data I gave it the extension called bin because I, I felt it was you know representing its content quite well it's a binary file it's just binary data we have no idea what it is you wouldn't need to do dot bin you can do anything you can do dot dog or dog horse I don't really care it's just a dot and some letters then you read the file one byte at a time and as long as that byte you're reading is not equal to um, to nothing well basically we're gonna we're gonna ask the question did we find the file we did not until <laughs> it'll take a while then we're gonna print out some dots just to that's some testing stuff we can need that of course then we gotta um, read the um, the first byte and then we're gonna ask if that byte is equal to F E and we're gonna read one more byte and ask if that byte is equal to D 8 and if that is true I think we found a JPEG image now this was a bit fast concluding what we're looking for but I'm gonna show you why I did this in a moment then we set file to true and I basically just add on to my bytes to save variable the first two that I already you know extracted and then we're gonna go down up to here and say now it is true then it's reading run byte and basically just adding you know all the bytes now we need when all of this is done here we're gonna open a new file called testjpg write binary write the byte to save to that file and close it and if I run this again I'm gonna get this image here and that is the image that is inside the calf.bin that I cannot open well I can but it's just gonna be jimble jumble like that so what I'm gonna do now is basically go ahead and say um, so I'm gonna take and comment out all of this and that and I think I'm gonna go ahead and say print whoops byte and I'm basically gonna do that run the code and what we see here is just all the bytes that we got let me just go to the top what we got in the, the very first byte we got in the file it's a zero zero so that evaluates to really basically nothing when you scroll down a bit we can follow with our eyes because they just all zeros so it seems that someone maybe tried to wipe the hard disk with some hard disk uh, wiper you know writing all bytes to zeros so while we scroll down we see that there's a lot of zeros so I'm gonna pick the scroll by here and just basically go down oops and now we see there's something now so I'm gonna scroll up with the mouse now because it's a long scroll and see if we can find something that makes sense so I'm gonna okay so now we have a lot of zeros you see that I'm gonna continue scrolling a bit and what we see here is the very first byte is FFD8 that is what I look for by the way FFD8 so I'm saying if I have something saying FFD8 I should actually take these two with uh, along with the FFD8 but I was lazy just want to prove a point and you can add that if you wish to as an exercise so, so what you see here is the bytes FF and D8 is present and then I can see 
it says jfif, which is very normal for JPEG files. And when I just look through it, it looks like it might be an image. So what I really could do now is say, okay, so FFD8, I'm gonna go to the, go to the, um, the link one more time. So this link here, I see FFD8 and mm, we get initial first hit as FFD8 is a generic JPEG file. We do also see here that FFD8 FFE0, so FFD8 FFE0 is going to be FFD8 FFE0. That is a perfect match for a JPEG file. Also because we got the JFIF afterwards and so on. You know, the last two bytes here, I think, um, let me just, I think, yeah, you can see here that it says XX, XX, so it kind of tells that there's something after, but we do not really know, so yeah. Anyways, this is enough for me to verify. Do I really need to understand all this? Do I really need to, to, you know, what you really need to do is basically write some code now and say, I'm gonna try and extract this because you just verified that looking at the raw bytes that there's a JPEG file. So basically this is what the script does. We are extracting all the bytes. We're looking for this signature saying if the very first byte we're looking at is FF and the next one reading that is D8 and I should continue doing that. And of course, this is a very <laughs> stupid code I wrote. It, it, it doesn't really represent a, a more dynamic and smooth piece of code and it could definitely be refactored a lot. But just to show the point that you can do this <coughs> with Python knowing very little code actually. You don't need to do any fancy pantsy object oriented code with a lot of wrappers and Java or C++. Gotta make your life really hard, you're gonna cry all night. So really use Python and you, you don't need time. You know, why did I put semicolons there? That is a very bad habit, you know, I have because, you know, Java, right? So this is basically it. So yeah, until next time, take care.